I'm so excited to be in the last week of our mental health series, Let's Talk About It. Have you all enjoyed this series, for those of you that have been here? Yeah, it's been really good. I want to start out by saying that I am not a mental health expert, but I am a mental health advocate. Uh, I have people in my family, I have friends who have struggled with mental health, and so I believe in talking about mental health, and I feel like we're really blessed in our church because about four or five years ago we made a decision that we would start to talk about things that not everyone talks about. Mental health was one of those taboo issues that we kind of knew about, but we thought we needed to bring it front and center. Because if we're talking about mental health, we're talking about something that God has given us and we don't want to ignore something that God has put inside of us. So um, over the years, we have had different um, topics and, and, and different ideas of what we think mental health is like. So what I want to do today is I want to give you some categories of areas about mental health. I want to give you some specifics about ways I believe that maybe we have seen things one way, we need to take a look at it another way. Or maybe we believe this truth and it's actually something that's a lie. Or maybe there's something we should be doing that we're not doing. So we're going to cover a lot in a short amount of, period, short amount of time. But here's what I want you to do before we get started. I want you to say this. This is about me. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not about you. This is about me. Okay. So we've just taken ownership that today's message is for you. It could be for your neighbor, but it's definitely for you today. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, so the first category that I want to talk about is this. The fear of mental health. The fear of mental health. Over the years, there has been a fear about mental health, not because we didn't want to talk about it, it was because we were afraid of talking about it. We kind of ignored it, we pushed it off to the side, we acted like it wasn't happening, we kind of kept it over here while the church was happening right here, and I think it's really because we were uncomfortable with the topic. I don't think we knew exactly what we were going to say. And see, many people along the way, even when I was a young girl, talked about mental health, now I know, in a negatively, negative manner. So one of my friends, her mother was struggling, and they called it a nervous breakdown. And we were like, oh, you know, taboo, we can't talk to her because she had a nervous breakdown. So we were afraid of something that we were not familiar with. And all I can say is this, I am so thankful that I live in a time in history where we can talk about the things that we didn't talk about years ago. And we have a church that we can talk about it in, amen? <clears throat> but the thing is, it only makes sense that our mental health is important to talk about, just like our spiritual health and our physical health because one, when one of those things is out of line, it affects the other. So when our physical health is out of line, it affects our mental health and our spiritual health. When our spiritual health is out of line, it doesn't affect our mental and our physical health. Well, so it makes sense that when our mental health is not in line, it's going to affect our spiritual and our physical health as well. Amen? So that's where we're going today. So the next category that I want to talk about this, the approach for mental health. So we know we're talking about mental health. What's the next thing that we do? Well, some they're, they're, they're spiritual, there's mental, and there's their physical health. They're all different, but when you combine those together, they, they, they make the whole entirety. Now, there's a name for this, and you hear it out there in the, in the physician's world, and it's called the holistic approach. Have you heard of the holistic approach? So the holistic approach, it's not the, it, it can be weird, but it's not always weird. So it's something that I want to talk about today because it's biblical, it's something that has been talked about for thousands of years, and it's actually based in the Bible. It, it was interesting because about 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul, he talked about this. He introduced it in a scripture. He had never talked about it before, but he introduced it in the scripture in 1 Thessalonians. He was talking to the new Christians in Thessalonica, and I want you to read this with me. He says this, I pray that God, who gives you peace, will make you completely holy, and may your spirit soul and body be kept healthy and faultless until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. So he's talking to the new Christians. He's saying, hey guys, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want you to talk to you about your body, your physical health. I want to talk to you about your spiritual health. And then I want to talk to you about this third thing that we haven't talked about before. It's called your soul. It's your soul. And they're probably like, the soul, what does that mean? So I want to go back. Let's go back to the scripture. I'm going to teach you just for a second. So Here's the scripture again. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept healthy and faultless until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. Okay, give me the next one. 
Is that it? I pray that God, okay, I'm not there yet. I'm ahead, I'm ahead, I'm ahead. I pray that God who gives you peace will make you completely holy. Here we go. And may your spirit, soul, check this out, soul, psyche, psyche, mind, will, and emotions. So he introduces this word called soul, psyche, psyche. Does that look familiar to you? Does that look familiar to anybody? Right? It it talks about the mind, the will, and our emotions. That's a term that we use now. It was a term that started in Greek 2,000 years ago, probably before that. And and what that means is, like I'm kind of a word nerd, I love looking at words. What that means, that's the base root word for our word psychology. The study of what? The mind. The study of the mind. So back in Paul's day, he's telling them, we need to talk about our minds for a minute. We need to make sure that our minds are healthy as we're walking this walk with Jesus. So this word soul encompasses the mind, the will, the emotions. So this is where our thinking happens. So when you think day to day, it comes from your soul. When you have a feeling, it comes from your soul. A desire, you have an affection towards something, it comes from your soul. And an aversion is things that you like things that you don't like. All of that comes from your soul. So God wants us to have a healthy body, soul, and spirit. And if he wants that, then we have to consider that in church often. We have to talk about it often because, again, our mental health is as important as our spiritual and physical health. But if I can be honest, which I think I can here, there are many people who consider themselves spiritual gurus that are able to pray heaven down. They're able to pray fire down. They know the scripture. They know the way that it's supposed to be spoken. But in all of that knowledge, they're mentally a mess. They're mentally a mess. So here we, here we have spiritual, body, soul. Spiritually, they're great, right? It's fantastic. Body, I can still run laps. I can still do push-ups. I'm good. But man, my mind is a wreck. My mind's a wreck. We need our mental health to be tended to so that we can walk this whole walk with Jesus. Not just one, not just two, but all three. Are you with me so far? Okay, I'm like taking you through a little teaching lesson here. So that was just the opening of my message. Are you ready to begin? Okay, all right. So here we go. The next category is this, the misconception about mental health. There's a misconception about mental health, and I want to clear it up today. Here's what it is. There's this idea that if you're a new follower of Jesus, that the moment you start to follow him, that everything is going to become okay. Have you ever heard that? Once you start following Jesus, we're going to be good. You're going to be good. Your walk's good. Your marriage good. Your kids are good. The job's good. Everything's good. Lie. Straight from the pit of hell, as we know. Here's the truth. Jesus saves your life instantly. But Jesus does not fix everything in your life instantly. So he fixes, or he saves you right away. When you say, Jesus, I'm yours, I'm forgiven for my sins, he's going to save you, you're going to be in heaven when you die. But he doesn't fix everything inside of you when you get saved. All, over all of these years in ministry, I've never known anyone to say, dang it, I was in church on Sunday, I accepted Jesus, I made a decision to follow him, and all of a sudden I don't have to wear spanks anymore. My flaps have turned to abs. I've got a spiritual six pack. I'm ready to roll. Never seen it happen. Never seen it happen. Or when I started to follow Jesus, all those follicles that were falling away, they all started to grow again. Never heard anybody say when I started to follow Jesus, my bank account grew. Never heard anyone say when I started to follow Jesus, I could recite all of the books of the Bible. Or when I started to follow Jesus, my husband rubbed my legs every single night. But I can tell you that does happen with me. So that, yeah, that does happen. Or when I started to follow Jesus, my mind instantly became healthy. And I think there's a fallacy with that, that we believe that our mind's supposed to automatically change quickly. And many times it doesn't. It could be months, it could be years, it could be a lifetime that you're spending in that. So I want to make sure that you know that that misconception is not true. That again, you'll be saved instantly, but it will, might be a lifetime for other things in your life to be fixed. All right, let's keep going. You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. The next category is this. There's a lie about mental health. There's an incorrect thing that may have happened to many of you guys, 
and I'm going to clear it up because people will tell you this. A lot of the Christian community will tell you this. If you're having a mental health issue, you just need to pray it away. You need to, you're not believing enough. You're, you don't have enough faith. You're not praying enough. You're not, you're not doing something enough to make God change you. That is a lie. That is not truth. In fact, Paul, the author of much of the New Testament, as we've talked about in 2 Corinthians, says it like this. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from being proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Not one time, not two times, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. So I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I pleasure my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul didn't pray one time, two times. He prayed and begged three different times, they tell us. I think it was even more than that because I know that Paul was a man of God. He was like, what's wrong? Why is this afflicting me so much? And many of you are the same way. You're like, what's wrong? Why is my mind so messed up? Why am I still struggling with this mental health? Why am I still struggling with, 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 with thoughts that should not be in my mind? Like, what's going on with me? And maybe you've prayed and you've begged for God because you're still struggling. Here's what I want you to know. And I want you to tell, I want to tell you this from my perspective and what I want you to know about me. I, the first thing is this, I will always be the one that will push you to keep going, okay? The second thing is this, I will always be the one in belie that believes that God will help you get through any situation. The third thing is this, I will always be the one that will say, it's okay not to be okay. But I will always be the one who reminds you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what mental health situation that you're in, that my hope is that TE Church will be a safe place for you. That this place will be a house where you'll be able to come and to be able to experience a freedom that you may not have experienced any place else, else that you've been. Whether you have depression, whether you have anxiety, whether you have bipolar disorder, that may be a stigma in your life because you've been living with it for so long. You're like, no one understands me. Everybody's disregarding me. People don't talk to me. They're afraid of who I am. I want you to know that there is nothing wrong with you. When you say there is something wrong with me, there is nothing wrong for you. Here's the alert. There's something wrong with all of us. All of us. All of us. So look at your neighbor and say, there's something wrong with you. And the other side, there's something wrong with you. <clears throat> so if somebody, if somebody comes up to you again and says this, suck it up, buttercup. Keep moving. You're, you're not praying enough. You're not believing enough. You're not doing enough for what God wants you to do. First of all, you may be doing all that, but it may not be the time where God's going to take you on that path where he wants you to take. But I don't want you to dare think that you have to withdraw, that you have to withhold, that you have to not talk about it, that you have to say, I'm going to keep silent because I don't want anyone to know. Because in silence, the devil can have a field day. You don't want him to have a field day in your mind in addition to all of the other things that are going on. Because here's what I know about TE Church. There is a place, there is a space where it's okay to not be okay. Okay. Amen? Okay. Okay, let's keep going. The next category is this, the Bible and mental health. We already talked about it just a minute ago, but one of my favorite things about the Bible is this, is that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what's happening in my life, I can look at the pages of history and I can say, there is someone who is more jacked up than me. It's beautiful. It, it's, it's, it's encouraging for me that I'm not the only one, but there are people in the pages of history in the Bible who were called by God. They were chosen by God to lead armies, to lead nations, to lead people across the desert. They struggled with their mental health, just like we do. David, the chosen king of Israel, all the brothers were gone through until finally they looked and there was, there was David, chosen out of all of his brothers to be the king of Israel. And yet he had a struggle with his mental health. In Psalm 42, it says this, day and night I cry and tears are my only food. Let me stop there for a minute. Day and night I cry. The only food that I've eaten are my tears. That says to me that he was 
He was anguishing over something, that he was heartbroken over something. He couldn't get through because all he could think about was crying. My heart breaks when I remember the past because of all of the things that I have done. Why, I ask myself, are you so depressed? Why am I having these problems? Why is it that I can't straighten myself out? God has chosen me, and yet here I am, crying and tearful every day. Why are you so upset inside? And then there's Moses. Moses takes millions of Israelites and he takes them across the desert. He also was chosen by God. He was, but, but, but he had had a mountaintop experience and had come down off the mountain and there were all of the people that he was leading. They were betraying him. They were doing the wrong things. They were ex- doing the exact opposite of what he had taught them to do through God. And in Numbers, he says this, I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me, God. If you do this to me, please kill me at once. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let me see my misery. So typically when we talk about Moses and we talk about David, when I'm here talking about them, I'm talking about their strength, their heroism, their their bravery, all of these things that they did. But we don't talk a whole lot about their struggle with mental health because sometimes it's uncomfortable to go to that place. But again, for me, it's comforting because I see that God has shown us that it's okay for me not to be okay, and it's okay for me to understand that there are people who have gone before me who have experienced the same thing, amen? Okay, next category is this, you and mental health. You, say me. One more time. Me. There it is. There it is. I think we're the same way as what we see in the Bible, I I think we love to talk about our achievements, how much we know, how much we can recite, how much we can do, our new car, our new house, our new relationship, all the good things. Not bad to talk about that at all. In fact, I would encourage you to talk about those things that bring you joy. However, if we start to examine ourselves deeply, I, I think we have to look at the other areas. Again, this message today is for us to be aware of our mental health. And if we look deeply into ourselves, if you look deeply into your soul, then I think that you would see that all of us need to be watching for mental health. So you might be thinking about the sister who um, has depression, or you might think about the brother-in-law who has bipolar disorder. So when you think about those people, I don't have that. Let me tell you something, you got something. You have something. It may not be a categorized diagnosis, but there's something vying for our mental capacity to move in a different direction. So what all this walk is about. That's what we're doing every day is we're trying to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Direct yourself toward him. But there are things coming in by the side. So let me ask you these questions to see if maybe, maybe this is you. Have you ever had any abuse or trauma in your life? You don't have to answer that out loud. Second thing, has anyone ever said something mean to you? Have you ever grieved because you lost someone close to you? Have you ever been utterly exhausted? Have you ever had hormonal imbalance that affected you mentally? See, all of those things, we're not, we're not saying any type of diagnosis when we say those things. We're just talking about normal life. My dad passed away in January. Normal life, people pass away, but man, it's been tough the last six months. Grieving's tough. Do you think that's a mental health issue? I think it might be. It's messing with my mental health a little bit. See, every time you go through something that's weighty or sudden or hurtful or sad or mean or abusive or even something that's happy, like the birth of a baby. The birth of the baby is one of the best things that could ever happen to you. But when I had our third child, Caton, something changed within me and I didn't know quite what that was. And I wasn't the same mentally as I had been. I was a little... Um, it was a little hard in my thinking. I had, had a little bit of confusion. I couldn't understand why I wasn't processing things well. It just didn't make sense to me. And so I found out that what I had was postpartum depression. Depression? I have depression? Is that, that's what depression feels like? Yeah, that's what it feels like. It, depression and, and anxiety, all these things aren't laying on the floor in the gutter, people. Like, it, it's you having a baby, and then a week later, you're not functioning well. That's what mental health is. So out of a hormonal imbalance, my mental health began to crumble. So I have to be aware still today of my mental health. I still have to watch that because the position that I'm in, along with PT, it's, it's sometimes a little bit tough. 
We get a lot of criticism. We get a lot of behind-the-scenes chatter. We get a lot of betrayal, a lot of things that you would think that we wouldn't struggle with because we're all Christians, aren't we? We're all good people, right? I don't see any heads nodding up and down. Yes, we are, we are good people. We are good people. But statistically, this is crazy to me, statistically, pastors struggle with depression, loneliness, and even some cases, suicide. Over the past couple of years since COVID, there have been so many pastors that have taken their lives by suicide. Why? Because it, it's a tough thing and, and you can't handle the mental health part of it and the mental, um, the, the, I guess the men, you don't have the mental fortitude for it a lot of times. So um, yeah, that's, that was a real downer, but we'll bring this back up. We're going to bring it back up. You ready to bring it back up? Let's do it. Okay. I feel like we went down into a little hole. We're going we're to come back up again. The seventh category is this, imbalance in mental health. There was a paramedic who was talking about ski accidents in Colorado, of which there are many. And he said that 90% of ski accidents happen within the last hour of the day, the last hour that that person is skiing. And I was like, wow, I wonder why that would be. And he said, it's two things. It's overconfidence and it's weariness. Overconfidence and weariness. And so I started to think about that and I thought, wait a minute, we're talking about mental health and the imbalance in our lives. There are so many of us who are going 900,000 miles an hour. We're motoring through life and we're pushing ourselves. And the funny thing is we're pushing ourselves to places that are doable, but those places are also not sustainable. So they're doable, I can do this, I've got my mind made up, no one's gonna change my mind, but man, can you sustain that for a long period of time? Can you keep that pace up? Is that something that could be out of balance in your life that is causing stress in your mental health? See, we create a lifestyle that is out of balance, that is swayed in one direction, and there's this quote that I found fascinating. It says this, we're gonna put this up. We were never designed for sedentary, endure, socially isolated, fast food laden, sleep deprived, screen addicted, frenzied pace of modern life. We weren't designed for that. Yet, so many of us do it. I've done it. I still have to be careful that I don't do it. it it's, it's, I think there's a, a badge of honor in that. How are you today? Well, I'm busy, but I'm good. Yeah, life is crazy, but I'm okay. Are you? Are you okay? Are you good? Maybe that's the exact picture that you walked in here with today. And you think, I don't have a mental health problem. I don't have any struggles, but yet you're trying to take everything. You've got the new baby. You've got, you've got the new job. You've got the new relationship. And, 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 and everything seems to be going okay, but is it going okay? Are you going in a direction that's just too fast for where God wants you to go? And Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says this, better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Now, let me explain that to you. So many of us are going at such a fast-paced life. It's like we have both hands that are filled all the time. The scripture, can we put that back up one more time? The scripture says this, better one handful with tranquility than two hands full with toil and chasing after the wind. So let's talk about that. One handful with tranquility. So I've got one handful, my other hand is what? It's open, it's free. I don't have this, I've got this. It allows God to do something in my life. I've got tranquility and I've got an open hand. God can put some peace in there. I can seek God, I can go to a life class. I can continue to come to church. I can meet with friends who love me because I need that peace. Like when we're running like this and we're chasing after things and we're doing the things that are doable, that are not sustainable, I, I don't know how we can even manage to do this. Like we can't, like, like our hands don't open because we're constantly like this. But one hand with tranquility and one hand opened up changes the whole thing. We gotta let go of the double-fisted life somehow. For me, it looks like this. I've learned because I was this person. I can do it all, I can be it all, I can be the best mom, I, 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 can, I can be the best pastor, I can be the best wife, I can do like I, all this stuff and I'm gonna keep, 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 I'm doing messages, I'm gonna do. I'm like, wait a minute, whew, this is a little overwhelming for me. Overwhelm is a part of a mental health. So I gotta, I really gotta let go of some things. 
I'm a big proponent on taking a nap when you feel tired. Any nappers? I thought that was like negative. I grew up my whole life like that. I'm like, people don't take naps? Really? Let's take a nap. Let's just take a nap. Mental health helps. That helps your help mental health. You know what? I'm not going to go to something seven days a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then start over again. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take Friday as my day off. I'm going to take Saturday as my day off. Like day off. Like I'm not going to get on this. I'm not going to pull my phone out and have to text everybody. I might just get on socially just to look at things. But I, I'm going to take this time. This is a mental health thing that can help you. This is a break that your mind needs. I always say my mind needs a break. My mind, I never realized what that meant. I, I think I said it and I was like, wait a minute, I better do this before my mind does break. I'm not as strong as I think I am in the, that area because I need to have God, have my one hand open where God can help strengthen me. It's not enough for me to do it on my own. I'm telling you, if you're in that space right now, you can't do it on your own. You got to open that hand. God, come with me. Let's do it together. My mind is going to break if I don't. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. I don't want us to become weary of the things that we think we have to do. I want us to remind ourselves that, that we can still get the things done that God wants us to get done and we can still attend to our mental health. Amen? The eighth thing I want to, the eighth category is this, self-talk and mental health. Self-talk and mental health. This concept I've seen so many, so many people dealing with in the last few years especially. It, it, I want to use this word, this word ruminating. Have you ever heard of the word ruminating? Okay, so ruminating is this. If you've ever been around livestock, which I have not, but if you have, then you know this is what cows do when they eat. So a cow, bend over, pick up the food, put it in its mouth, and begin to chew it. When it's done chewing, it will swallow it, and then after a period of time, it will regurgitate that again. Then it'll chew again, then it'll swallow, and then it'll regurgitate again. And so, psychologists, people in the medical field have talked about that, that's something that we do with our thoughts. So we take our thoughts, and we chew on them, and we think about them, and then we swallow them, and they're gone, but the next day comes along, and something happens to us, and then we pull the thoughts again, and we chew on them again, and we swallow them again, and they're gone. We've dealt with them, but man, something else happens, and we pull them up again, and the cycle begins to happen over and over again. It's called ruminating. And see, the thing about ruminating, at a certain point, the first time might not be as bad, but when that cow does it three times, and that comes back up again, there's a lot of gross stuff with that. And that's what happens to us. We think about it once, then we think about it twice, then the third time, and pretty soon, it's gross in here. And we're sad in here because we haven't aligned our thoughts with what God wants us to think about. Now we're taking it on ourselves and we're saying, I'm dealing with it, I'm dealing with it, I'm going to chew it up, I'm going to swallow it, I'm going to bring it back up again. No, no, that's not what God wants. Because it, it keeps us from our minds being clear. You can't think clearly when you're ruminating in something. And I want to remind you of this, that your thoughts can, in your life can either destroy you or your thoughts in your life can bless you. Because 90% of our emotions are determined by the way we talk to ourselves, what we say about ourselves, how we think about ourselves. And I know we talked about this scripture last week, but I thought I would reintroduce it again, Philippians 4, 8, 9. These are the things that God says to think about. Now, I really want you to think about this. Like, like focus up here for a second, please. Not that nobody isn't, because y'all are like looking, but I'm just, I, I get passionate Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. As you're ruminating, the God of peace will help you to push those things away because I'm going to take those thoughts that I've been chewing on and I'm not going to think about those. I'm going to think about the things that are true in my life. I've got a great relationship with my husband. I have a house that I'm living in. What is something else that blesses me? I have children that I love and adore. I have a church that I can come to every single week. I have people in my life that speak to me that love me unconditionally. I have some sh cool shoes on today that I really like. Like, what are the things that you can think on that will take your mind away from ruminating on the cud? That's the term, the cud. 
kind of gross, isn't it? So one of the things that I've done over the last couple of years is I, I've thought about how our minds think. And I know for myself, one of the things that helps me the most is when I can see something and I can look at it and it helps to remind me how I need to talk to myself. Because when I started out in ministry, and many of you have heard this story, and it's not even a story, it's just a statement that I'm such an encourager and I expected that from other people, be careful of your expectations, and I never got the encouragement in ministry as I would, would have wanted. And so we've been doing this for 20 years, that's a long period of time, and I decided, well, you know what? I'm not gonna be that girl that carries on that curse. I'm gonna be the girl that turns it around and says, I'm gonna encourage everybody that I talk to. So pretty much every day I do this thing called Linda Seidler Daily, and I put it out on social media and I write on it all the time, and I, I just put these little sayings out there and these little things to encourage people. And so I have these boxes that have these in it, and what I found with some people who have the same issue that I do is that these are just little cards in here. And these cards, there's 31 days of cards. And they're encouragement cards. And some people put them in their car. Some people put them in their bathrooms, on their nightstands. Some people get them and give them as gifts for someone who's struggling. But the thing that I found about these cards is they help me to see something visually and I can begin to repeat it back to myself so that my self-talk is different than what it has been, amen? Okay, and the last thing is this. The last category is this. And because of 2020, I think many of us are still in this mindset. Isolation and mental health. Isolation and mental health. Do you know that the first problem in the Bible was not sin? that the first problem in the Bible was solitude. Because in Genesis 2.18, the word says this, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for us to be on an island alone. It's not good for us to stay in our houses alone. It's not good for us to not have friendships and be alone. It's not good for us to do that. The Bible says this, that we need to be involved in the lives of other people. We need to have those friendships that help us in times of trouble. So isolation and your mental health could be one of the biggest issues that you find. And here's what I wanna suggest as we're closing. If that's you and you found yourself in an isolated state and you've withdrawn to a place that you really feel like it's, your, your mind is just out of control, after the service today, we're gonna to do what we did last week. We're gonna have an opportunity for you to pray with some of our prayer team please take this opportunity today to do that. One of the things that I know that I know that I know is what we keep in isolation, the enemy can have a field day with. What we bring out into the open, God can take care of and help us with. Saying the words to someone, and it's, it's between you, you and the person that you're praying with. You say, you know what, I'm struggling right now. I feel isolated. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm not able to manage my thoughts. Whatever that is, I need to get a diagnosis. I need to talk to a counselor. I don't know what that is for you today. I'm struggling because I had something that just happened and I'm still hurting from it. I'm grieving from it. Come up and talk to somebody today. We all do that? Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of close this out by saying, listen, it's been a great day. I'm not gonna pray us out because I know you guys will be able to pray with somebody who's here, but I love you. I'm praying for your mental health. I pray for you all the time. And I love you guys, and I pray that this message was helpful for you today. Thank you.